Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So because I do lots of research on tourism and traveling to Hawaii since it is tied to my business, I have come to learn that the average stay and average vacation time in Hawaii is seven days. And I've also received comments from viewers asking me to put together a Kauai travel itinerary. So I decided to put those two pieces of information together and create a seven day travel itinerary to Kauai. Just a little note, if you do get into Kauai really late at night, I know some flights only get in around like 10 or 11 p.m. If so, try to add an extra day to your itinerary just so you could try to match this itinerary as best as you can. If you try to cram everything together in a smaller amount of time, I think it will be too rushed and too much to do in a short period of time. It was even hard for me to put together a seven day itinerary because there's just so much to do and I wanted to try to put everything that's amazing and I don't want you to miss in those seven days. Another thing to know is that I tried to make this like a middle budget type of itinerary. I didn't want to go too high end and add like heli rides and things like that because that's not going to fit a lot of people's budget. I do have one activity that you have to pay for and it's a bit pricey but 100% worth it, 100% recommend it so stay tuned for that. In my opinion you should do four days in the north and three days in the south. The North Shore is more rainy but it gives you those lush beautiful green mountains and beautiful beaches. I think the north side has definitely way better beaches than the south and you have the most epic hikes on the north side. The south side is definitely more sunny, has more of that resort type of feeling when you're there and you also have easier access to go and hit up the west side. For both the north shore and the south side you will find better rates in terms of lodging at an Airbnb or VRBO but if hotel lodging is your thing then go for it but I just want to give you guys a heads up on that. Also with any of the recommendations I mentioned in this itinerary make sure that that place whether it's a a restaurant or activity is open because everything varies. Some restaurants will be closed on a Monday or on a Thursday so please check before you go to that spot. Also suggest renting a car. My top sites whenever I've needed family to rent a car on island are kayak.com, Expedia, and Hotwire. And on these websites sometimes they do these comparison tools of their competitors don't ever use those. Go directly to those websites to see what deals you can get. I always seem to get a deal from one of those three websites. You can also consider using the website Toro. This is a way for vehicle owners to list their cars that you can go ahead and rent directly through them. Essentially it's like an Airbnb for vehicles. Two more things before we get to the itinerary. One, make sure you have a rain jacket. Especially on the North Shore, the weather is really unpredictable and the rain can surprise you from time to time, so it's always good to have on hand. Two, make sure you always bring a minimum of two swimsuits to Kauai because you always want to leave a set in the car so you can always have one on hand. Last thing I want to know is that I like to be pretty active when I travel. So I do have quite a few hiking activities that I'm adding in this itinerary. If hiking is not your thing or you just feel like it's too much you can obviously find different activities to do but I also think that they're worth doing and so that's why I'm putting them in there. Now on to the itinerary. Let's get to it. On day one you will be landing into the Lihui airport. On your flight you will most likely be coming in from the north side of the island so try to get a seat on the left for a good view once you're coming in to land. Also I would try to land on island as early as possible for a few reasons but mainly so you can go to the north shore, drop off your bags and get going. I would also try to take money out of the ATM at the airport while you can. Yes there is a fee. I think it's either three dollars or three fifty but it's good to be prepared because there's a lot of local food trucks and shops that are cash only and even on your drive up to the North Shore you might see some vendors out on the side of the street selling some goodies that might interest you. When you land in Tuluhui Airport you will take a shuttle to go pick up your rental car. All the rental car places are right by the airport and they all have shuttles. Once you grab your car start heading on up to the North Shore. I recommend that you stay in the Princeville area only because if you stay anywhere from Hanalei further north you run the risk of having the gate that goes into Hanalei 
closed off. If there are heavy rains and the river that goes through Hanalei floods, they do close that access off. So you can be stuck on that side until the water recedes. So if you do stay in Princeville, the drive from the airport is about an hour. Go to your accommodations, drop off your bags, and throw some swimsuits under your clothes or throw them in the car. If you're staying out of vacation rental, now's the time to run over to the grocery store and grab some stuff to stock up your fridge. If you're staying at a hotel, then I would suggest definitely still going to the grocery store and loading up on some waters and some snacks. Now you can go drop off your stuff that you picked up at the grocery store and head on out to Hanalei Town. As you're walking around the main town, if your lodging doesn't provide snorkel gear or your hotel does not, this is a good time to swing by Hanalei Surf or Pedal Paddle and they actually provide you snorkel rental gear which I highly recommend that you pick up so you can have it for the next few days while you're in the North Shore. Also, if you haven't had lunch yet, now is a good time to pick something up from one of the yummy restaurants in the area like Pat's Tacos, Hanalei Cafe, Fresh Bite Kauai, and Cafe Turmeric are all really good spots. Actually, Chicken and Barrel is also a really popular spot too. Once you finish lunch, take a cruise on over to check out the famous Waioli Church, and then cruise on over to the Hanalei Pier. Enjoy relaxing on the beach and jumping into the warm Pacific Ocean. After chilling out on the beach for the afternoon, I would recommend actually calling up one of the local restaurants and doing some takeout to bring back to your vacation rental, or if you're set on eating out, try one of the restaurants in the Princeville Center, like Lotus Garden or BJ's or Tiki and Niki to name a few. If you do go out to dinner, try to get there early because everything on island does close down early. Day two. Now that you are nice and rested, it's time to explore more of the North Shore. As always, make sure you bring a bathing suit under your clothes or throw something in your car so you're prepared for the day. And also bring along that snorkel gear that you rented yesterday. If you couldn't grab it yesterday, then you're gonna be heading back to Hanalei anyway so you could pick it up today. If you're not gonna be cooking up your own breakfast, then I would suggest going to the spot in the Princeville Center. They have yummy acai bowls and bagels and eggs and coffee to get your day started. Then we're gonna be heading back to Hanalei today and we're gonna go and kayak the Hanalei River. You can pick up a rental at Kayak Hanalei. They don't just have kayaks dry and you can also rent things like stand-up paddle boards. You can kayak the river in just a couple of hours. Once you're done with that, you can hop back in your car and cruise the 15 minute drive to Kilauea. On your way down though, make sure you make a pit stop at the Faring Family Farm Stand. And go ahead and pick yourself up a Frosty. See if you can get a pineapple banana one. Trust me, you'll thank me later. Now continue your way down to Kilauea and go and check out the Kilauea Lighthouse. This is also a wonderful place to go and take some really beautiful photos of the coastline. After that, cruise on over to the Kilauea Center where they have a bunch of little different shops. Maybe you can pick up a gift or something for yourself or for family back home. After that, head over to the Kilauea Market and Cafe. Grab something from there to go or you can even go ahead and sit down and eat at the cafe. After that, head on out and go to Anini Beach. Anini is very calm waters. You will not be seeing waves over there, but it's a really good place for snorkeling. Not my favorite, that's coming, but still really good. Now that you're done with the beach, go ahead and hop back in your car. And if you have time or the energy to do so, you can head on over to Queen's Bath. So please, 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 please listen to the following message as it's really important about Queen's Bath. It can be very dangerous to visit Queen's Bath. So only go if it's low tide, the gate is not closed, or no high surf warning. You do have better chances of visiting in the summer versus the winter, but if the gate is closed, whether it's summer, winter, or not, there is a reason why that gate is closed, so please don't try to go around it and access the path anyway. If it's closed and you do still have time to do something, I would suggest going on a nice long walk on the Princeville path. Now it's time to head home, get showered up, and get ready for dinner. If you're looking for something a little more upscale but still beach casual, places like Barracuda, Postcards Cafe, and PV Eats all hit that category. If you're looking for places more laid back, I would check out Calypso or Tahiti Nui. Tahiti Nui actually has live music every night except Wednesdays because on Wednesdays they have a luau and you can buy tickets online. I'll put a link in the description below. Day three. Today is the day you're going to be doing the best hike ever, the Nepali Coast aka 
Callao Trail. I recommend getting out to that hike as early as possible. If you're staying at a vacation rental, go ahead and cook yourself up some quick breakfast. And if you're staying at a hotel, go ahead and grab something quick at the hotel. You will need a permit to access the park, so I'll put a link in the description where you can obtain one. Permits sell out quickly, so try to get one as soon as possible. You can reserve up to 14 days out. Back to our itinerary. After you grab yourself some breakfast, go ahead and stop at the grocery store to pick up some sandwiches to go and some snacks and definitely lots of water. Then head on out 30 minutes to Hyanna Park. With this hike, you could either do the first two miles, which would be four miles round trip to the beach. This beach is dangerous year round. It is not a swimmable beach, so please do not go and try to swim in this beach. Or you could do the four mile trek, which is eight miles round trip to the waterfalls. I'm not adding the option to do the 11 mile trek, which is 22 miles round trip because that requires you to sleep overnight and we only have seven days people, so we gotta make this quick. So only the four mile or the eight mile round trip options you have. I've talked about this hike before in another video. And I've mentioned that the first two miles are moderate. And then the next two miles, if you go to the waterfalls, are a little more difficult. But both my kids have done it at very young ages. So you can do it if you're in decent shape. If you feel like it's getting too strenuous at any point, obviously you can always turn around anyway. So enjoy the snacks that you picked up at the grocery store while you're on the hike. But save those sandwiches or that food to go when you're finished with the hike while you're sitting on KA Beach, which is located at the trail entrance. There are some showers at the park and I would suggest rinsing off some of the mud that you most likely acquired while you were hiking and head back into your car. I would suggest cruising on over to my favorite beach in the entire world, Tunnels Beach, which is only six minutes away. Now this is my most favorite beach on island and definitely the most epic for snorkeling. I love heading here after that nice long hike in the Pali Coast, but Unfortunately, you have to eventually leave this beautiful beach. As you head back home, you will be cruising through Hanalei so you can go ahead and drop off the snorkel gear that you rented. You can also take this time while you're in Hanalei to go ahead and grab some food to go to bring back to your place of lodging. Or if you're really set on eating out, then you can go back home and shower and maybe eat something closer to home in the Princeville Center like I mentioned on day one. Day four. Today you're gonna be heading on south and doing another hike. Go get yourself all packed up and then start heading on down south and go and eat at a place called Russell's, formerly known as Eat Healthy Kauai. Yes, it is a vegan spot, but trust me, their stuff is so yummy, even for you non-vegans out there. I'm not vegan, my partner's not vegan, and we love the food there. After you finish up your breakfast, hop in your car and head over to the Sleeping Giant Trailhead. Keep in mind, this hike is super muddy, so I just want you to be aware of that. And it will take you about an hour to three hours, depending on your pace. Once you finish that hike, those views at the top were amazing, weren't they? You can cruise on over and check out Opakea Falls. And if it took you a few hours to complete that hike, you might be ready for lunch. And there won't be too many lunch spots on the way down and you still have a good 30 minutes to go or so. So I recommend backtracking just a little bit, about seven minutes and checking out Coconut Fish Cafe. I love going there. The staff's always really friendly. All our food's always really delicious. So I recommend going there. If they are closed, if it's an off day, you can go check out the Sleeping Giant Grill or Monaco's. Once you are done eating, I would suggest that you go and take a cruise to go check out Wailua Falls and then head on down south to your vacation rental or hotel. Check in, drop off your bags, and then throw on your swimsuit and head over to Poipu Beach to relax for the rest of the afternoon. Once you're all set at the beach, head on home, shower up, and head over to the shops of Kakui Ula. You can walk around and get some shopping in, and when you're ready, enjoy dinner at one of their many restaurants. If you don't have dessert at one of those restaurants, I would definitely recommend having a nightcap at Lappert's Ice Cream. Day five. This is the day I highly recommend that you go ahead and take a boat tour of the Nepali coast. This is that activity I said that's gonna be a little bit pricey, but 100% worth it. And I highly recommend using Captain Andy's tours. I'll put a link in the description below because every single person I've ever recommended them to 
has loved it, loved it, loved it. Now, depending on what tour you do, I will give you suggestions for both those days. So if you do an 8 a.m. tour, I'll give you suggestions on what to do after that tour is complete. And if you do the sunset tour, I'll give you suggestions on what to do before that tour. So let's start with the 8 a.m. tour. If you do the 8 a.m. tour, they're gonna be taking care of your breakfast and lunch, so you don't have to worry about that. And you'll be back on island around 2 p.m.-ish. Once you're back on island, go ahead and cruise on over to do a nice walk on the Heritage Trail. It should take you about one and a half hours to complete. After that, go ahead and soak up some sun at Shipwrecks Beach. After you're done hanging at the beach, go home, shower up, and take a cruise on out to Old Kaloa Town and check out the shops and old plantation buildings over there. From there, cruise on over to have dinner at Kiyoki's Paradise. Or if you wanna to go to a place that's casual, still overlooking the beach, you could go check out Brennix Beach Broiler. And both of those spots are really great places to eat. But if you're looking for something a little more upscale, go ahead and check out Tide Pools at the Grand Hyatt Hotel or Red Salt at Koa Kea Hotel. All these restaurants have menus that are online, so you can also check them out to see what they have and also their prices. Now, if you decided to do the sunset cruise with Captain Andes, your departure time would be 2.30, but technically you're supposed to be there 45 minutes before. So with that in mind, here are my suggestions for that day. Start off your morning with a breakfast at Little Fish Coffee. They have a variety of acai bowls and bagels, like breakfast bagels, etc., and sandwiches. After that, go ahead and hop in your car and go and check out that heritage trail I mentioned earlier. And once you're done with the trail, you can go and chill at Shipwrecks Beach for a little while. From here, you can go ahead and head back to your lodge and shower up so you can be ready for your cruise. You will eat really well on the sunset cruise. Now, depending on what time you started your day today, you might be in the mood for lunch or even a little snack. If you are in the mood for lunch or a snack, there are gonna be options at the port where you're gonna be waiting to board the boat. There's the Port Allen Sunset Grill and also the Kauai Island Brewery where you can go over and grab a couple of appetizers or if you're in the mood for a full lunch, you can grab that too. Day six. Today is the day you're gonna go and check out the beautiful Waimea Canyon. As always, make sure you throw a swimsuit on under your clothing or throw some stuff in the car so you have the option of visiting the beach later if you'd like to. As you cruise on over to the canyon, stop by the Kalaheo Cafe and Coffee for a really yummy breakfast. Once you finish up your breakfast, go ahead and cruise on over to Waimea Canyon. It should take you about 45 minutes from there. Park your car and go ahead and snap away at the beautiful canyon. Once you're done with your Instagram worthy shots, go ahead and hop back in your car and continue up a little bit further and go check out the Kalalau Lookout. And then get back in your car and cruise on up just a little more to the Pu'u Okila Lookout. If you watched my West Side video, then you know that sometimes clouds can roll in and block the views of any of these lookouts completely. But try hanging around 15, 20 minutes if you can and see if it clears up. Again, there's no way to predict this, but hopefully when you go up there, it's a beautiful clear day. Once you're done with all those photos of the lookouts, go ahead and cruise on down the mountain and swing by one of the most famous spots for shave ice, Jojo's Shave Ice. After you're done with your shave ice, go ahead and swing on by the Kauai Coffee Company. Their coffee is truly, truly delicious and the grounds are really spectacular. Even if you don't drink coffee, it's worth going to see. You can even pick up a little gift for family back home. After that, head over to the cute little town of Hanapepe. When you're there, I highly recommend having your lunch at Japanese Grandma's Cafe. Once you're done with your lunch, Go ahead and just take a quick little walk right near Japanese Grandma's place and check out the Hanapepe Swing Bridge. There are other cute little shops and galleries in the area. I love going to Talk Story Bookstore, but it's totally up to you if you wanna walk around the area a little bit more and check out all those little shops. Once you're done with Hanapepe, go ahead and grab your car and head over to Salt Pond Beach and enjoy the beach for the rest of the afternoon. For dinner, whatever you didn't have for day five's recommendation, you can have today. Day seven! I I know, it's so crazy, it's time to say goodbye. Seven days goes by so quickly. But if you have time before your flight and you wanna have a nice sit down breakfast and you wanna do something a little more upscale, go ahead and check out the Elima Terrace at the Grand Hyatt Hotel. And if you want something a little more casual, go ahead and check out the Anui Nui Cafe. After you have your breakfast, I would suggest, if you have the time, to go and swing by the Spouting Horn because it's just like a quick little stop and it's pretty cool to see 
and mine as well if you have time to kill. Now it's time to head over to the airport, drop off the rental car, and thank you for visiting the beautiful island of Kauai. That's it guys, that's my seven day itinerary for Kauai. If you have visited Kauai before, is there anything on your list personally that you believe is more important than the items I have on my list that you would switch out? Or if you plan on visiting, do you have any questions about any of the activities I've mentioned in my itinerary? Go ahead and let me know in the comments below. As always guys, thank you so much for watching and if you like this video, go ahead and click that like button. If you want to see more videos of mine where I talk about kawaii and financing, investing, and hosting, go ahead and click that subscribe button. I'll see you next time.